Hello, this is uh, Clem from 3D Palace, and uh, welcome to the tutorial on uh, World Machine, which is an extension to the TerraGen material that I've uh, put together. Um, if you haven't looked at the TerraGen uh, material, you might uh, want to go back, take a look at that, because uh, what we're going to be doing here is working with uh, TerraGen terrain and uh, creating some more detail to it, and then re-importing it back into TerraGen. Okay, so what we have here is uh, World Machine opened up, and this is our general workspace. Uh, over on the left here, we have a preview. Um, with that, we got uh, height, uh, white being the highest, dark being the lowest. You can have a shaded view, or height and shaded, which is very nice. Neat thing about this also, if you click your left mouse button and drag around, we can change the um, lighting in the terrain. We can also set the colors to the terrain. We have some presets here. Doesn't seem like it did anything. Yeah. We'll see if it did anything when we do a build world. Uh, one of the things with World Machine is uh, after you've made a lot of adjustments to any one of the parameters in it, you have to rebuild the world and then before you can preview it. Uh, here we have a toggle main view, which uh, what that does is it toggles uh, this a three-dimensional view or your workspace view. And then here are your workspace devices. Double-clicking them, well, double-clicking them, will bring up uh, their uh, attributes that you can adjust and change. And then we have some level editing. World Machine uh, really comes with a almost absolutely no documentation to it so it's uh, sort of tough you gotta sort of play and work your way through it but I'll uh, show you what I've come up with here um, some really neat neat things here okay across the top here we've got uh, some different bars each one of them has uh, if you hover your mouse over it it'll tell you what this is this is your preview your save open file and a new file this is a build world what I was telling you about before. And uh, let's see if we can get... There we go. Let's see how that changed a little bit. Had some great Perlin noise texture there. Size of our world. And this is going to be great for uh, setting up the world size for export to Terragen. We set our height meter. We can lock our detail parameters. Another place that we can set up um, is right here. 3D resolution limiter. And uh, TerraGen in the unregistered version uh, is 512, 256, and 128. So I'm going to set mine to 512. Let's see what else we have here. This is a randomizer. Uh, this is uh, an input device. Now, how uh, World Builder works with uh, works with itself, it's uh, quite different than a lot of other world uh, generation programs. Uh, you have these little parameter boxes that you wire together, and you can wire them together in different configurations to make different objects. Each one of the different objects are three different groups. Basically, we've got generators, which are in green, uh, filters, which are blue boxes, and uh, output uh, boxes, which are red boxes. And uh, right here in the window, we have a Perlin noise generator to our file output. And here we have the shaded view. And let's take a look at what our generated terrain looks like. The left mouse button held down does a, a rotate and pan. The right mouse button does a height. The arrow keys move you forward and backwards. And then also in this view here, our working view, our layout, uh, the right mouse button allows us click and drag to zoom in and zoom out and then we can select certain objects for moving them with the left
left mouse button. Okay, let's go to shaded here. Now, uh, double clicking any of the boxes brings up their uh, parameters. You can also right click them, which brings up another view output window. Uh, we can change the name of it, we can set the parameters, or create a macro. But here we have a file name. We have to, here we write it to disk. We can also tell what we want to export as. In our case, is TerraGen formats, or we could do a grayscale TGA for export import into um, any one of the uh, favorite paint shop programs. Okay, uh, we can go. We can toggle between the main view with the toggle button here, or we can just right click anywhere in a grid space. There we go. Takes a minute or two to ge uh, regenerate the terrain, but that'll toggle us back and forth. Okay, let's uh, take a look here and try to change some terrain. Looking at the same terrain can get pretty boring. So uh, we go up here, and this uh, button here is Transform. We're going to bring down a Transform box, and I'm going to left click the primary output button on the Perlin Noise and drag it to the primary input button and then the primary output back to the file and let's uh... if i click at the Perlin noise you can see the preview uh... the transform isn't really doing anything right now back to the file output and if i click on either one of these we should get an updated version of what each filter is applying through the chain there we go we can see that it's already changed that slightly, that Perlin noise. So if I click a rebuild the world, there we go. As you can see we've actually added slightly a bit more detail and cragginess. Oh, there we go, rebuild world and preview. There we go. Okay, let's uh, double click the transform and what we get in here are some mathematical transformations that we can apply to our map. Uh, we have a canyonage, uh, canyonize and a glacier which are both effects that I described uh, in the TerraGen tutorials. Uh, real quick, canyonization usually what that does is uh, uh, sharpen the edges of uh, slopes and flatten uh, the bottoms of uh, crevasses and the tops of plateaus. Glaciate sort of rounds everything off in a NURB surface kind of way. Uh, a smooth filter, sort of a fuzz it looks like here. Let's turn that up, rebuild, and take a look at what it is. See how that just sort of smoothed off those sharper edges. Height varying low pass filter. Let's take a look at what that one does. to me like it sort of flattened out. Looks like it did a normalize function on the dark areas, so it would be the lower valley areas are now flat and don't have that rigid detail in them. Cubic Midlands uh, seems to flatten out, as you can see up here, uh, the gray 
which is the mid height map. like everything sort of got filled in by sand and what we have are just the peaks that were above the mid grayscale and then the midland plateaus looks like it's rounding off the uh, tops of the the mountains there got to try to remember to always uh rebuild it there we go that certainly did add uh some flattening effect ridged out some areas into some very vertical canyons Created some funky looking textures. Let's go back to take a look at the canyonization. sort of sharpened our valleys or our walls made everything a little bit more spiky let's see what glaciation does here and smoothed out a lot of our grayscale and then we have an intensity which is an overall effect and we have some terrain there okay now that we've looked uh, at a basic transformation we can look across the tops here and we can see uh, different types of generators and filters uh, that we have available. We have a Perlin input, uh, a file input, for if we were going to uh, use uh, uh, like a terrain file from Terrigen, a gradient ramp, and a constant filter, uh, a combiner, a chooser, a splitter, whoops, height transformation, a terrace, uh, that would create different terracing effects, uh, a clamp which allows us to clamp off uh, certain areas which is sort of like a, a, a in Photoshop what is that a, a gradient ramp, uh, an inverter, different types of combiner, a displacement which is sort of neat why don't I drag one of those out We have natural filters, two different types of erosion filters, height selector, a, sl a slope selector, an angle selector. These would be different ways that we could uh, dictate what is happening in certain areas of the uh, uh, of the terrain, very similar to the way to what we've shown you or what I showed you in uh, the Terragen uh, surface mapping video. So we'll go over a little bit over here too file output S different scaling and splitting devices okay so we've got whoops a displacement here and I'm going to keep the transform that we have and add in another minute here. There we go. I want to add in a Perlin noise. We have a secondary Perlin noise. And I'm going to left click it 
And as you can see, I have my my cord here. Right clicking it, uh, deselects it. But I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab a splitter. And I think that's a splitter right there. Yep. And I want two of them. Also going to grab a joiner or a combiner. Now I'm going to go from my Perlin noise to the primary input of both the splitters. Then on the I'm going to double click my splitters and I'm going to change their outputs to two. Then I'm going to drag one of the primary outputs to the primary input of the transform. the output of the transformer to the combiner and the combiner to the output file. Now these little green red lights are telling me that, the, well the green is telling me I've got a continuous path flow. The red here is saying that uh, we have an interrupted path flow. And as you can see that uh, there's uh, missing data information and so the preview cannot be completed. It's great to tell you that that's where you have a broken link in your chain if you're trying to diagnose a more complex surface map. Okay, on my second Perlin noise, I'm going to grab the first out and go into the effect mask of my transform. So in essence now it's going up and around and down. Now I have a displacement. I'm going to grab the first or the second splitter from the first Perlin noise and add it into the primary input. I'm going to take the secondary uh, Perlin noise and add that into the distortion amount. And I'm going to take the primary output to the combiner and now we have two chains. Now what we have here is a Perlin noise that I generate here which is controlling the effect mask on the transform here. So if I disconnect that for a moment and disconnect this so they're not showing. In theory what we have here is effects of this transform that I apply are being controlled by this mask of this Perlin noise. So let's open this up and create an interesting uh, Perlin noise. Then take a look at, as you can see, certain areas are now masked off where we have more distorted fractal uh, landscape generated from the first Perlin noise um, in areas that are now completely flat which were masked off by this Perlin noise. Let's build that and take a little preview. Now as you can see that's quite an effect We have flat areas and lots of lots of detail from that secondary Perlin noise. There we go. Let's go back. Turn these all the way down for a moment. Rebuild that. And take a look at what it looks like.
There we go. Let's add back in those splitters that we had turned off into the displacement map. And go back down here to the combiner and build. And see what it does right off the bat. Doesn't really need to change much, does it? did add some texture in here. Now keep your eye on the shaded view. That uh, direction moves uh, the displacement around in the 365 degree and that displacement that we're seeing is controlled by this Perlin noise mask see what that did. Interesting. Flattened out some plateaus. Added in some razorback ridges. So as you can see that this is quite a powerful tool. Even some terracing effects over here. Very nice. This uh almost this chunk over here reminds me of some landscapes I've seen in the Arizona area. These are all still too spiky. That's uh See if we can round them out a little bit. Almost a sandblasting effect. Uh, mellowed it out a little bit, sort of rounded off those uh, very sharp ridges that we had going through here, but it also did take out that terracing effect that we had in there. That was sort of cool. But I think you're already starting to get a chance to see what a powerful little toy this is and what you can do with it. So Let's see, let's uh, reset here and uh, try a different uh, 
different approach. Okay, let's uh, try to see if we can make a uh, river running through um, a uh, Perlin noise uh, geometry. So, or terrain. So let's grab another Perlin noise generator. And let's grab two height generators, height selectors. And let's change the no uh, the name of this to uh, river. And let's uh, see if we can come up with a better looking river start. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at what we can come up with here in the height selector. pretty good. And what we're really controlling here it looks like is the tops and the bottoms and where the uh, actual valleys are going to be for the river mask. It's actually a little easier to see in the in the shaded view or the height view. Okay, the second height generator here is uh, really just the inverse of the first one. And what we're trying to do is 
set it up so that it's creating a mirror image, clamping it, so to speak, for us. And this should produce us a mask where uh, white is where the river is, or white is where the train should be, and black is where the river is. Let's see what we can come up with here. Looks like we've got it inverted improperly. Okay, let's see, let's go to the height data. And so what we have here is, well, white is the highest area and black is the lowest, but that's sort of reverse what we want, so let's try this. There we go. Much closer. Much, much closer to what we were thinking of. Okay, now let's uh, focus on creating some of that other terrain. Let's see what that looks like. Not too bad, really. Could be more outstanding, but for our uh, intents and purposes, looks like it'll work out pretty okay. So let's grab a clamping device and a combiner. Okay, let's look at the combiner here, change it to multiply, grab uh, the primary one of the inputs here, our river, Okay, by choosing the combiner or the multiplication on the combiner uh, guarantees that the riverbed uh, is going to be at zero. So that'll be halfway through, which makes it very nice uh, and plays easy with uh, TerraGen. There we go. Now, now you see when we brought up here, now we have a riverbed running through the dark mask. And the light masked area from the it's now part of the Perlin noise that we brought in. Now that'll raise and lower this clamp will raise and lower our terrain. So let's uh, go back here and uh, build and preview and see what we come up with. Voila! We have terrain with very steep edges and a river running through it. A great way to combine two different uh, masks 
together. And gain a little more control over your terrains that you generate. Let's see now if we can get uh, the... Uh, there, maybe that'll change the edges of our... the edges of our um, river. change the edges sort of let's see if we can get a more sloping effect okay let's see maybe if we fuzz it out a little bit more maybe change it to an exponential uh, exponential softened the edges a little bit more, creating a slightly different terrain look. But there you go. Okay, after a quick reset, let's uh, take a look at what other type of files that we can uh, export out of uh, World Machine here. Uh, some neat things is that we can grab a hold of uh, other types of information or export other types of information like uh, bitmaps uh, for use in texturing in uh, Terragen or also any other uh, texturing program. And let's grab a file input here and open up our favorite uh, Devil's Tower. And uh, let's also grab uh, a weathering. Erosion. Tallest depth. It's a good one, and we should grab that to a file output. Let's go with the wear map. There we go. I know this looks sort of 
funky. There's a lot of things going on. So, what we've got is our original file going to a splitter to two different types of erosions. Our erosion's primary outputs are going into a combiner, into another erosion file to our primary output. So let's uh, take a look at what that gives us as a working file. There we go. Not too astounding, but you can see that it's much narrower. Let's see if we can get it pulled back here. There we go. Everything's sort of very, very smoothed out. Let's see what we can come up with in our... There we go. Now let's look at it there. See, we've got some nice deep uh, erosion, water erosion. Okay, let's see if we go into our uh, first erosion file here. Let's see what we can come up with. like. Okay, let's take a look at what the death position looks like. the wear. There we go. There we go. As you can see, it's a black and white mask that uh, outlines some great wear zones that we can apply texture to now. Let's take a look at the tallest, uh, tallest age that we have here. Another beautiful black and white mask that we have outlined some areas to work with. And we haven't really even looked inside of this one. What if we go two phase? rebuild. Okay, we've got it rebuilt here, and we can see the different height maps. Let's go back here. That's our main output. Let's take a look at the shaded version. You can see that that's slightly different than the original version that we had that has more erosional effects. Again, these can be animated, these erosional effects over time is a really nifty feature so that you could have a time lapse of uh, the geology forming itself you could morph between them a lot of that opens the door for a lot of opportunities but the the main idea here was to show you what you could export uh, with Terragen and uh, as uh, height data maps and uh, masks now these uh, from Terragen have to be exported as um, TGAs right here. We have a number of other selections, or we can export it as a window BMT file. And for import into Terragen, we're going to have to import it as a BMP. Um, I haven't tested the uh, Windows BMP export from uh, World Machine. I'm sure it works here. Um, I've only gone uh, TGA and then imported into uh, my favorite Paint Shop program and converted it to a Windows BMP and then import it into Terragen with the FOA imports and the SOA, um, SOA uh, plugins.
that we've shown you in the TerraGen sections. So I hope you learned something from this. This is a fantastic little uh, piece. Um, perhaps here we'll open up TerraGen and show you what we can come up with. But uh, this is just some beginning ideas. And after a quick rebuild, let's take a look at our uh, flow map here. And you can see that what this is are all the, the bottoms of the river valleys that we had carved in there. Can you see them? It's sort of hard to tell on this one specifically, but if we go back to our file output here, and there we go. And basically what those are, are these heavily eroded areas. So what I'm going to do is export this as a t uh, TerraGen terrain map. to grab the uh, flow map I'm going to test the Windows BMP And let's call that the um, and let's see what else do we have? A wear map, a, a deposition. Let's, uh, that's good for our show. So let's uh, close down World Builder here, World Machine, and uh, bring up TerraGen real quick.